بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سیشن نمبر تھرٹی نائن آف آور کورس آن آرگنائزیشن تھیری اینڈ ڈیزائن اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ انادر ماڈیول انادر اسمال ٹاپک بٹ اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ ون آن ہاؤ کانفلکٹ اکرز ان دی آرگنائزیشن اینڈ ہاؤ دا یوز آف پاور اینڈ پالیٹکس ڈیفیوزز اور ڈیزالوز اور سم ٹائمس انکریزز دس کانفلکٹ ناؤ why conflict occurs in organizations we need to understand that we are talking about conflict at a group level we are discussing the intergroup conflict rather than interpersonal conflict interpersonal conflict as you know it can involve or it does involve two people and the issue of interpersonal conflict is more closely related with organizational behavior therefore because it is a micro issue an issue of uh, behavior occurring at micro level or at individual levels therefore we will not go into the details of interpersonal conflict and we will straight away move to the group level conflict or what is called as intergroup conflict because that is the area where organizational conflicts are really Uh, they become important and they become crucial because if departments conflict with each other, if groups of people conflict with each other, then that does affect the performance and the output of groups, departments and organization as a whole. So, what exactly is intergroup conflict and why certain groups develop conflicts and certain groups don't develop conflicts? Now that is the key, key question from where we would like to take a start. Now intergroup conflict requires three ingredients or three precursors or three preconditions jin ke hote huye intergroup conflict ke hune ka imkaan badh jata hai. In the beginning to understand the process, uh, let's assume we are talking about any group, a group of friends. For example, uh, I'm talking about a group of friends which is uh, further subdivided into two groups. And they are going to do a project or they are going for an excursion or they are going for holidays. And they have divided themselves into a group of five each and they have made two groups. Or let's assume that they have made three groups. Why can conflict occur among them? Or why would conflict occur among them? Now the first reason or first ingredient or the first requirement for intergroup conflict to occur is the group identification itself. Agar aap ki group ke saath identification hi nahi, to aap ki us group ke saath commitment nahi banengi. And when most of the members of the group don't identify with that group, then they will have no commitment with that group. So the chances are that they will not enter into any conflict. So the first requirement of group conflict is that the groups should identify. People residing in those groups should identify with that group. Just as an example, the group of friends dividing themselves into two or three groups. And if each group has an identity that this group is um, responsible for taking care of finances, the other group is responsible for taking care of the logistics, and the third group is responsible for carrying out the some other activities. Now, you can see that in these three groups, the goals are different. اس گولس کی جو ڈفرینس ہے اس پہ ہم بعد میں بات کریں گے لیکن تینوں گروپ کی آئیڈینٹی بھی فرق ہے ایک گروپ از کنسرنڈ ود مینیجنگ دی فائنینسز سو دیئر آئیڈینٹی اور دیئر کمٹمنٹ اور دیئر لائلٹی از ٹوورڈس دی مینجمنٹ آف فائنینسز آف دیٹ پرٹیکولر پروجیکٹ اور ٹرپ اور ہالیڈے ویئر ایز دی ادر گروپ از کنسرنڈ ود مینیجنگ دی لوجسٹکس دیٹ مینس دی ہوٹل بکنگز دی ریزرویشنز the travel arrangements, the meals, the lodgings, all those things. Now, 
एक ग्रुप अपने आप को आइडेंटिफाई कर रहा है फाइनेंस के साथ दूसरा ग्रुप अपने आप को आइडेंटिफाई कर रहा है लॉजिस्टिक्स के साथ सो स्ट्रेट वे देर इज अ डिफरेंस इन देयर आइडेंटिफिकेशन एंड एज अूमन नेचर द ग्रुप्स विल टेक प्राइड इन दिस आइडेंटिटी बिकॉज दे दे विल अस्यूम और दे विल टेक इट फॉर ग्रांटेड दैट सिंस वी आर गिवन दी फाइनेंशियल जॉब सो we are the financial experts or we are the logistic experts so ye pehli cheez hai jo groups mein tension create kar sakti that is the identity similarly this identity could be based around anything isko humne base kiya is example mein around functions because in organizations usually the group identity is around functions like marketing people have a very strong identity that we are marketing people or sales people or r&d people or hr people so people have an inclination to identify with their department they have an inclination to identify with their group and they have an inclination to identify with the members of those groups as well so the first ingredient which is required to create tension because conflict is a result of tension it is not a quarrel it is not koi ladai jhagda nahi it is a normal process of differing opinions and tension developing across the groups so first ingredient we have discussed is the group identity now agar aap dekhe isko national level pe dekhe why there is conflict between nations the first requirement again is the identification with a country identification with a nation that we are pakistanis or we are somebody else is american somebody else is english somebody else is french so ye identities hain hamari uh, ethnic basis pe bhi hain religious basis pe bhi hain gender basis pe bhi hain aap do group alag alag kar dijiye ek male ka ek females ka they will immediately develop identities around gender and they will become quite biased for their group group because of that particular strong identity around which they are separated ya isko aap age group ke lihaz se divide kar this is a young group this is a middle age group this is a senior group again there will be strong group identities because senior age group people will find other people who are like themselves isi tarah younger age group mein people will have uh, people who are like themselves ab human nature ye hoti hai ki jab hum apne jaise logon mein hote hain hum unke sath ek loyalty ek identity develop kar lete hain aur ye multi dimensional basis hain iski koi ek base nahi jaise hum dekh rahe hain kahin ye gender ho sakta hai kahin ye kaam ho sakta hai function ho sakta hai kahin par ye religion ho sakta hai kahin par ye nationality ho sakti kahin par ye ideology ho sakti like people following a similar uh, political ideology people having a right wing or a left wing inclination they they will also form groups and those groups will have different identities and because of the difference in identities there is a possibility that some sort of tension or conflict among those groups can arise so that is a point which i am sure is well understood by now the second ingredient or the second requirement to develop group conflict or group tension is the phenomena which we call as observable group differences dekhiye ek to humne group identity ki baat ki ke log group identity ko develop kar lete hain kisi bhi basis second thing is that when groups are formed or when departments are formed there are vivid clear observable group differences this term an example the gender ki base pe agar hum grouping karte hain to so there is clear cut group difference one group belongs to females the other group belongs to males if we divide the groups according to ideologies then again we can observe that the groups are different one group is pursuing a rightist approach whereas the other is pursuing a leftist approach so ye bhi observable difference if we are talking about marketing and production in a company 
there are observable difference between the two departments, their structures, their goals, their objectives, their the reason of their being there, the way they work, the measures on which they are yeah, their performance is evaluated, the kind of rewards which they get, they are all observable and still they are creating differentiation or differences in the group. Then some groups will have members which are very strong, aggressive, vocal, other groups can, can have members uh, which are also strong and vocal but not uh, in, in the same intensity level as the first group, that could also create differences. So there are many dimensions again around which these differences or differentiating points can be created and this can create further tension among the groups because as I have already mentioned, as human beings we like similarities. We like to identify with a group, with a group of people, with a department where things and people are according to our liking or at a very basic level where people are like us. Jaha unke shock, unki ambitions, unki passions, hum jaise. When we are working in an advertising agency, for example, in the creative department of an advertising agency, we are surrounded by creative people. And that creativeness in those people creates a group identification and at the same time it creates a group differentiation and uh, differences from other groups like the account managers who are working in an advertising agency, they also come into contact with the creative uh, people, but their group is concerned with managing the accounts, collecting the receipts and uh, making new calls, closing in uh, the leads. So, unka kaam, unka tarika kar, unki uh, skills are different from the creative people. So they will also form a group of their own because they do the same thing. They will discuss things with each other, they will come up with ideas, but their ways and their methods and their um, methodology in general will be different from creative department and this difference is what I am trying to stress. And we have already touched upon this issue of differentiation when we talked about uh, the departmental technologies and there we discussed that departments are different in nature from each other because they are housed by different people. And those different people have different sets of cognitions, different sets of emotions. Jab unhe combine karenge, a combined cognition ya combined emotions to ban jate hain. But when we compare them across other groups, to jitne zyada ye sharp honge differences, Utna zyada chance hoga groups may conflict arise karne. And the third ingredient which is required in the organizations or anywhere where the groups exist to develop conflict between the groups is the element of frustration. Now from where does this frustration creeps in? We have already said that groups have different identities, groups have different strengths and weaknesses. They have different cognitive and emotive skills and levels and on top of it in, in organizations, groups have different goals and objectives. Now that is a crucial thing and kindly pay some attention here because if groups have different goals and we also know that organizations work in limited resources. So, if one group is achieving its goals and the other group is not achieving the goals, then that frustration which I am talking about is bound to develop, especially if one group is achieving on the expense of other, which means, which does not mean that one group is politically gaining on the expense of the other, but one group members are working harder, they are getting more resources they are getting more rewards, they are getting more uh, promotions. So that is happening at the expense of some other group. So in this way, the frustration which will develop between the groups will further increase this conflict. 
will because most of the conflicts are perceived in nature actual conflicts uh, interpersonal mein shayad zyada hain chances group conflicts zyada tak perceived interpersonal mein bhi most of the issues are perceived but in it is easy to clarify uh, the perceived conflict between two people but it becomes difficult to clarify or resolve conflicts between groups between because the cognition of a group is not very well studied is not very well understood individual level pe cognition pe kafi kaam hai aur iski kafi had tak samajh hai but how does a group think or how does a group react uh, that part is still not very uh, empirically it is still not studied but qualitative research has shown that these differences lead to group conflict and in the light of this discussion which we have had so far we can define intergroup conflict as a behavior that occurs among groups when participants identify with one group and perceive that other groups may block their group's goal achievement or expectations the underlined important word here is perceives as i already said most of the conflicts are result of perceptions and people can perceive uh, what they fear they can perceive that if that group attains this goal our group and in the long run myself will not get the advantage or if this group has more strength than our group has more skillful members then they have an advantage over our own group so ye jo fears hain fears that the other group will block my group's goal achievement or what i am expecting from the performance the other group will take it away or will block it that perception that uh, particular anxiety will create tension will create conflict among groups intergroup conflicts within organizations can be the sources of interpersonal conflict can be horizontal can be vertical is pe hum baad mein baat karenge lekin sources se pehle hum jo baat kar rahe hain that is the very reason of why conflict occurs in the first place no matter whether the sources are horizontal or the sources are vertical but group conflict ki basic teen ingredient humne aapke samne describe ki we will also try to relate the occurrence or the rate of conflict with the design or form of a particular company but before doing that we will move to another question and that will take us to the sources of group conflict why conflict exists number one reason is in organizations it is goal incompatibility now we have to understand that we are talking about organizations which are usually structured around functions which means they are structured around departments and those departments are formed around work patterns marketing for example will undertake marketing activities whereas finance department has its own responsibilities accounts department r&d production they have their own goals and they have their own responsibilities the organization on a whole might be pursuing a strategy of growth for example and that will translate that marketing and sales are pushing for growth now a typical scenario will develop well marketing and sales will demand more products more designs from the production department because marketing is looking at the customers is taking feedback from the customer and is also under the pressure from the top management to sell more so in order to sell more they will demand a better quality product from production goal of marketing is selling in this case is ki hum example there production on the other hand is a cost center as we know it is not a profit or a revenue center they have their own financial constraints in which they work they have their own logistical scheduling constraints 
they have their labor constraints, they have the shifts and uh, the laws and the labor laws, in sab cheezon ke andar rehte ho unhone kaam karna hai. And they are dependent on design department for new designs. So, to the objections of marketing, that production is not giving us quality products, the production department will say that we are trying our best to give you quality products, but the raw material which we are getting from the purchasing department is not up to the mark. Or the designs which we are getting from the design department are not according to our own specs and according to our own machinery, plant equipment, uh, convenience, therefore we cannot give you the exact quality. Now we goal difference ki baat kar. Design department will, has its own goals, R&D in design. And they, they can have a very different answer uh, to the problems of production and marketing. So, depending on the nature of the departments, their goals are always different. And there is bound to be an incompatibility of the goals between departments. This is a situation like a family. There are 5-6 children. They have been studying. And the head of the family is under pressure to send his elder son abroad for higher education. If he does that, he will be further under pressure by his younger kids, daughters and sons to do the same to them as well, that is to send them abroad because they will say that you send our brother abroad, now you should send us abroad as well because we also need higher education. So, here the goal in compatibility from the point of view of the father, he might not be able to afford sending four or five of his children abroad, but he might sacrifice two or three because he can send one. So, here the goal in compatibility uh, within siblings and a conflict can arise. So, if that can happen in families, we can very well understand that it does happen in organizations that there will be goal conflicts. There will be role conflicts as well. Within departments, goal conflict will be. So, ek to goal incompatibility hai, which is a natural reason or a natural source of causing intergroup conflict. The second thing is also, which I briefly touched when we were discussing the preconditions of conflict and that is the issue of differentiation. Now, differentiation has to be understood from the point of view that different groups have people coming from different backgrounds. Ye to theek hai, ek group ke andar bhi diversity. But when that group works together for some time, then they start sharing their values, they start sharing their knowledge, they start sharing their personal experiences, they come close to each other. Unke dharmyan ek bond develop ho jata hai. Not necessarily a friendship, but a working relationship develops. They start understanding each other's problems. They start understanding why Mr. So and So will come late tomorrow. Or why Mr. XYZ cannot attend company dinner tonight or department dinner tonight. Because they understand his problems. Because they are close and they work in a close environment. This is actually, this is not differentiation. This is a homogeneity among, uh, within a department. But if there are five, six, seven, eight departments and they are homogeneous in their own right, that within departments, yes, there is a little bit of homogeneity. But when we compare them and when they sit together, the differences between those departments will become even more apparent, even more observable. Because before that, their backgrounds were different. But there is not so much difference. People coming to work for marketing will have similar backgrounds as compared to people who are going to work for accounts. Their qualifications are different. So, the accounts that people are coming to work are qualification-wise the same. Marketing mein jo log aare hain, wo qualification background experience wise already ek jaise hain. 
اسی طرح سیلز آر این ڈی میں جو لوگ آ رہے ہیں وہ آلریڈی ایک جیسے اسی طرح پروڈکشن میں انجینئرنگ بیک گراؤنڈ سے لوگ آ رہے ہیں سو دیئر بیک گراؤنڈ آر سملر دے آر آلریڈی دے انڈرسٹینڈ ایچ ادر اور دیکھیں اگر آپ ایک بالکل اجنبی جگہ جاتے ہیں نئی آرگنائزیشن میں جاتے ہیں اینڈ یو ہیو این ایم بی اے ود اے میجر ان مارکیٹنگ اینڈ یو فائنڈ تھری اور فور ایم بی ایز ہو آر آلسو ایم بی اے بٹ ناٹ میجر ان مارکیٹنگ ون آف دیم از میجر ان ہیز گاٹ اے میجر ان مارکیٹنگ یو ول نیچرلی ڈیولپ اے ریپو ود ہیم وی ول اسٹارٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ کہ آپ نے کیا کورس کیے آپ نے کون کون سے کورس کیے ریسورس پرسن کون تھے اینڈ دس ان فارمل فارمل ڈسکشن ان دا بگننگ کین بیکم ان فارمل ول ڈیولپ اے ریپو بٹوین یو سو ڈپارٹمنٹس کی آپس میں جو ہوموجینیسٹی کریٹ ہوئی ہوتی ہے ود ان ڈپارٹمنٹس اٹ از بیکاز دوز پیپل نو ایچ ادر دے نو ایچ ادرس پرابلمس دے نو ایچ ادرس اسٹرینتھس دے نو ایچ ادرس ویکنیسز دے نو ایچ ادر ایموشنلی دے نو ایچ ادر انٹلیکچولی سو ان میں کاگنیٹو اور ایموشنل فیکٹرس کیونکہ کافی کامن ہو چکے ہوتے ہیں دیر فور دے ڈیولپ اے ہوموجینیسٹی بٹ انٹر ڈپارٹمنٹ ہوموجینیسٹی نہیں ہوتی انٹرا ڈپارٹمنٹ تو ہوگی ود ان ڈپارٹمنٹ دیر ول بی ٹو سم ڈگری دیر ول بی ہوموجینیسٹی بٹ بٹوین ڈپارٹمنٹس ہوموجینیسٹی کم ہوگی ہیٹروجینیسٹی بڑھ جائے گی اینڈ دیٹ ہیٹروجینیسٹی از پرسائسلی وٹ وی ٹرم ایز ڈفرینسیشن وین وی آر کمپیئرنگ ڈپارٹمنٹس ان دیٹ سینس اور آپ کو یاد ہوگا جب ہم نے ڈپارٹمنٹس کی بات کی تھی ڈپارٹمنٹس کی ٹیکنالوجی کی بات کی تھی تو وہاں پر ہم نے یہ کہا تھا کہ ڈفرینسیشن ڈپارٹمنٹس میں ہونا تو ایک نیچرل فنومنا ہے اس کو تو ہم کنٹرول یا مینیج نہیں کر سکتے اور کرنا بھی نہیں چاہتے بیکاز وی وانٹ ڈپارٹمنٹ ہیونگ دیئر اون آئیڈینٹیز ہیونگ دیئر اون ویلیوز ہیونگ دیئر اون ڈفرینسیشن اور ڈفرینسیٹنگ پوائنٹس بٹ ان اسپائٹ آف دس ڈفرینسیشن ہم نے ایک دوسرا ٹرم جو وہاں یوز کیا تھا دیٹ واز دا انٹیگریشن اس ڈفرینسز کے ڈفرینسیشن کے باوجود ہمیں ان ڈپارٹمنٹس کو اکٹھا چلانا ہے بیکاز دے ہیو ٹو رن دی آرگنائزیشن اینڈ آرگنائزیشن ایز گاٹ ٹو رن ان ون ڈائریکشن ناٹ ان مینی ڈائریکشن بیکاز اف ون ڈپارٹمنٹ پولس دی آرگنائزیشن ٹوورڈس دی رائٹ اینڈ دی ادر پولس اٹ ٹوورڈس لیفٹ دین دا آرگنائزیشنل پروگرس ول بی ہالٹیڈ سو آبجیکٹو آرگنائزیشن کو ہارم کرنا تو ہے نہیں دیر فور the creation of integration among departments becomes crucial but that is not our subject today today we are talking about the differences between departments ek aur example jisse ye phenomena ye aap pe clear ho jayega is the comparison between provinces like in our country we have four provinces and we are all under one flag the green and white flag of pakistan with a crescent and we have the same national anthem we have the same national and nationalistic values we have the same national priorities we follow the same national foreign policy but within provinces we are different like the province of punjab the people of punjab their culture their climate the traditional jobs which they do their traditional affinity to agriculture and for the last decades their traditional affinity or their traditional um, we can call it liking for moving into cosmopolitan cities like lahore and islamabad ek set ek set of cognition or emotional اسکلس یا کاگنیٹو یا ایموشنل ایکسپیرینسز کا ایک سیٹ ہے جو پنجاب میں ہمیں نظر آتا ہے وی گو ٹو این ڈبلیو ایف پی اینڈ وی سی دیٹ پیپل آر ڈفرینٹ دیئر ان کا ڈریس ڈفرینٹ ہے لینگویج ڈفرینٹ ہے ٹریڈیشنز ڈفرینٹ ہیں رائٹس متھس کلچر ڈفرینٹ ہے اینڈ سملرلی بلوچستان سندھ اپنی اپنی آئیڈینٹی لیے ہوئے ہیں اینڈ وی وانٹ دیٹ پروونشیل آئیڈینٹی بٹ nationally hum integration chahte hain right we don't want a provincial identity at the cost of national integration but we understand 
that there will be regional identifications, there will be regional differentiations. And this is the world in the world, not only in Pakistan, but also anywhere where countries are divided into states or into provinces or any uh, system of division which is used to geographically divide the country. Australia mein jis tere, south, north, east, west mein unhe divide kar rakha hai. England mein bhi aise hai, midlands and then south, west and north, west. In mein, and then you see the county matches occurring between those uh, regions create a lot of excitement in people because they have uh, identification with those teams on the basis of region. Like in England, Lancashire, when Lancashire is playing, then the people of Manchester will be backing Lancashire. Manchester United playing in a Premier League match, people of Manchester will be backing Manchester United. Arsenal, people of London will probably be backing it. Why? Because of the regional identities. So, here differentiations or these differences create conflicts because they create movable, forcible uh, values or commitments among the groups, jis, uh, group members, jis ko wo kisi bhi shakal mein, kisi bhi surat mein, haath se chhodne ko, dilute karne ko tayar nahi. And the third source of intergroup conflict, which the literature has shown us, is the task interdependence. Now that is interesting, because in spite of all the differences which we have mentioned, and in spite of all the differentiations in terms of cognition and emotions, still in companies and in organizations, people depend on their task and on their work on other departments. We cannot say that marketing department lives in isolation. Marketing depends on production. Production depends on R&D and design. And they all depend on finance department. And they all look for the policy matters and motivational issues and reward systems, they all look at HR. So there is a task interdependence. This task interdependence further accentuates or further increases the chances of a conflict. Okay, you are living in closed doors and you don't see each other, then Maybe you are you're behind the doors, you are collaborating and you are conspiring against each other, that is a different thing. But if you are depending, depending on each other for doing your jobs, for completing your projects, then you are seeing each other, you are meeting each other. The chances are that the confrontations and the conflicts which are inherent uh, because of the reasons which we have described, will probably take place because during task interdependence the other group even if they are not intentionally blocking you for doing your work you can perceive that it is happening because you have already made a perception about the group that this group's goal achievement can hinder my progress my group's progress so therefore they are creating problems for me and vice versa so this feeling of uh, independence, uh, this feeling of depending on each other on the face of differentiation and on the face of goal incompatibility is a challenge to manage. And again, the example of provinces will be handy here because provinces depend on each other sometimes for wheat, sometimes for rice, sometimes for sugar, sometimes for water, sometimes for other resources. They depend on each other and at the same time, they are answerable to their people for the integrity of the province, for the uh, differentiation of the province, for the identification of the province. But at a national level, they need to collaborate, they need to integrate, in spite of all the differences. Now, in our families, we see our chacha, ataya, mamus, in sab ko jab karte hai, different people coming from different backgrounds, raised by different families, differences in in every aspect, but when there is a family task to do, a marriage or a family sort of a project or a family business issue, to usme phir kaam bhi kathha karna padta. Ab jab kaam bhi kathha karna padega, differences bhi honge, to conflict ke chances zyada. The fourth source of intergroup conflict is the issue of resources. Because resources are always limited, groups, departments, people, 
they struggle to have better control of resources. And when there are groups, and those groups are sharing the same pie of resources, naturally they will struggle to acquire more control over those resources. This inherent struggle around resources, and these resources could be financial resources, could be physical resources, could be human resources. In Tino, resources ki limitation ki wajah se, the groups and the departments will further struggle for acquiring better resources, which can further increase the chances of a conflict. So, we have seen that the organizational conflict, the interdepartmental or intergroup conflict in organization looks like a natural phenomenon. Looks like it is bound to happen because people working together with different goals and with different backgrounds and still depending on each other for tasks and still sharing resources, there is a, an air of conflict which is bound to occur. Now, why in certain companies or why in certain organizations there are more conflicts and why in certain other companies the conflicts are less? Now, ek to cheez yaad rakhiye, humne kaha tha jah humne structures ki baat ki thi, to aapko yaad hoga, we talked about the signs and symptoms of a failing structure. Humne wahi ye kaha tha ke jab structure fail ho raha hota hai, which means when the structure is not suitable for a company, to uske kuch signs and symptoms aate hai, jin mein ek hai, decision making delay ho jati. Environmental changes, का रिस्पांस कंपनी बहुत देर में देती एंड द थर्ड वाज टू मच कॉन्फ्लिक्ट देयर इज टू मच कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विद इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिकॉज़ इट इज अकरिंग ड्यू टू अ मिसमैच बिटवीन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड द एनवायरमेंटल अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड थ्रेट्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट व्हिच अकर्स इन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन व्हिच इज सपोजेडली doing a good job in creating a comparative advantage or in making profits. So, I'm not talking about conflict which occurs during bad times or which occurs during uh, turnarounds because wo conflict jo hai, wo zyada uski nature mein severity zyada ho. I'm talking about routine conflicts which occur in organizations which are operating smoothly and routinely. Phir bhi, organization ke upar depend karega that the degree of conflict we will see will vary. And by now, the students of theory and design would understand that we have talked about different types of designs. Ek mechanistic design hai, ek humne organic design ki baat ki. Mechanistic design mein kya hai? Usme departmentalization zyada sharp hai. Differentiation in departments is more pronounced. Let me draw it for you. It will become perhaps a bit more clear by a simple diagrammatic presentation that in a mechanistic organization, this is the state of affairs when we are talking about departments. The departments are differentiated, there is no doubt, but they are not interdependent on each other. Interdependency hai, but itni nahi. As compared to another organization which has a flat horizontal structure or jahan par departments are nearly boundaryless. Jab unke darmiyan boundaryan kam hai, to unki interdependence aapas mein baut zyada hai. So, yahan par bhi differentiation is there, but interdependence is there and there is also goal incompatibility. Zyada chance of conflict is probably here. Because yahan par the people are sitting in their boxes and doing their jobs independent of each other. Because of the nature of the work, and because of the nature of the product, nature of the uh, structure of the company, the departments are taken as small empires. But in organic structure, mein, flat horizontal structure, mein, team based structure, mein, there is hardly any concept or hardly any room for a departmental loyalties. 
तो वहां पर डिपार्टमेंटल डिफ्रेंसिएशन कम हो जाएगी वो तो कम हो जाएगी लेकिन टास्क इंटरडिपेंडेंस बहुत बढ़ जाएगी रिसोर्स उतने ही लिमिटेड रहेंगे गोल इनकम्पेटेबिलिटी भी रहेगी लिहाजा चांसेस ज्यादा हो जाएंगे कॉन्फ्लिक्ट के इन सिचुएशन वेर पीपल कम इन टू कॉन्टेक्ट वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली बट एट द सेम टाइम वेन दीज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लर्न टू बिकम हॉरिजेंटल वेन द मास्टर द आर्ट ऑफ लिविंग लाइक ए टीम और लिविंग लाइक ए ग्रुप देन अ कल्चर विल डिवेलप विच विल रिड्यूस दीज कॉन्फ्लिक्ट तो कल्चर उन कॉन्फ्लिक्ट को रिड्यूस करेगा नो पॉलिसी एंड प्रोसीजर कैन हैंडल दो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑन द अदर हैंड इन मैकेनिस्टिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कॉन्फ्लिक्ट कम होने का चांस कम है बट वेन दे हैपन देर स्वेरिटी विल बी मच मोर बिकॉज वहां पर डिपार्टमेंटल डिफ्रेंसिएशन बहुत ज्यादा है गोल एंड कंपेटेबिलिटी भी ज्यादा है टास्क इंटरडिपेंडेंस इतनी तो नहीं है बट रिसोर्स आर लिमिटेड एंड एवरीबॉडी नोज दैट वी आर शेयरिंग फ्रॉम द सेम पूल सो इट कैन ऑल्सो हैपन इन मैकेनिस्टिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इट कैन ऑल्सो हैपन इन ऑर्गेनिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कॉन्टेक्स डिफरेंट होगा मैकेनिस्टिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में कॉन्फ्लिक्ट हो, अगर होनी शुरू हो जाए दे आर मोर डेंजरस बिकॉज दे आर डिफिकल्ट टू रिजॉल्व ऑर्गेनिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बिकॉज ऑफ देयर वेरी ऑर्गेनिक नेचर आर ऑलरेडी इन द फॉर्मेट ऑफ वन लार्ज ग्रुप वन लार्ज टीम सो द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट राइजिंग इन दो सिचुएशन विल बी मैनेज बट मोर सो बाय द कल्चर रादर दैन बाय द अथॉरिटी सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन द डिजाइन ऑफ अ कंपनी the ways to diffuse conflict will vary and the degree of severity of these sources jo humne kahe goal incompatibility hai differentiation hai task interdependence hai aur limited resources hai jitni in sources ki severity zyada hogi which means jitni goal incompatibility zyada hogi jitni departmental differentiation zyada hogi jitni task interdependence zyada hogi और जितने रिसोर्स तो लिमिटेड होते ही हैं जितनी भी और जितने कम होंगे रिसोर्स उतना ज्यादा चांस है कि हम कॉन्फ्लिक्ट को मैनेज कर पाए या नहीं कर पाए अब ये नहीं है कि हम मैनेज कर नहीं सकते तरीके मुख्तलिफ हो जाते हैं वेयर द डिग्री ऑफ स्वेरिटी ऑफ दीज सोर्स इज वेरी हाई एंड इन वन केस द डिग्री इज नॉट That high, तो वो हमें चॉइस देगा विच वे और विच मॉडल विल बी एडॉप्ट टू रिजोल्व दर्गेनाइजेशनल गोल्स विच मीन्स टू डिफ्यूज द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट सो दो बेसिकली मॉडल हैं जिनके जरिए इंटर ग्रुप कॉन्फ्लिक्ट को हैंडल किया जाता है वन इज कॉल्ड द रैशनल मॉडल ऑफ बिहेवियर एंड द अदर वन इज कॉल्ड द पोलिटिकल मॉडल ऑफ बिहेवियर so depending on the degree of severity of these sources we will either use rational behavioral model or political behavioral model to diffuse the conflicts occurring within organizations now a few words about the rational and political model when conflict is low conflict low kab hogi jab goal in compatibility kam hogi jab departmental differentiation kam hogi जब टास्क इंटरडिपेंडेंस कम होगी इन दो सिचुएशन वेन द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इज लो वेन द रैशनल मॉडल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज यूज वॉट इज रैशनल मॉडल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजिंग इट इज द सेम व्यू जो हमने देखा था वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रैशनल डिसीजन मेकिंग रैशनल डिसीजन मेकिंग और जितनी भी रैशनैलिटी से रिलेटेड मैनेजमेंट के इशूज हैं they assume when we say rationality then we are assuming that organizations are like machines various metaphors hai na organizations ko kabhi describe kiya jata hai as organisms kabhi organizations ko describe kiya jata hai as machines kabhi organization ko describe kiya jata hai as brains so if we describe organization as a machine we are taking the rational view of organizations so in machine like organizations or in other words in mechanistic organizations the chances of conflict as i've already said are low because people don't come into contact with each other 
ان کی ڈفرینسیشن تو ڈپارٹمنٹس کی ہوتی ہیں انٹر ڈپینڈنس اتنی نہیں ہوتی گول ان کمپیٹیبلٹی اتنی نہیں ہوگی سو وہاں پر ہم یوز کریں گے ریشنل ماڈل آف ریزالونگ کانفلکٹس وچ مینس تھرو پروسیجرس اینڈ پالیسیز اینڈ ایس او پیز بٹ اینڈ ایک اور چیز جو میں یہاں بتانا ضروری سمجھتا ہوں ریشنل ماڈل آف ریزالونگ کانفلکٹس از یوزڈ وین دی انٹر ڈپینڈنس از پولڈ ناٹ سیکوینشل اور ریسی پروکل اور ہم نے دیکھا تھا کہ میکینسٹک آرگنائزیشن میں انٹر ڈپینڈنس پولڈ ہوتی وین دیر از سینٹرلائزیشن آف ڈسیزن میکنگ ایکسٹینسو انفارمیشن سسٹمس آر پرزنٹ ٹو شیئر انفارمیشن اینڈ دا فوکس از ایفیشینسی سو یہ ساری کی ساری چیزیں ہمیں پوائنٹ آؤٹ کر رہی ہیں ٹوورڈز اے میکینسٹک اسٹرکچر سو ان شارٹ وٹ وی آر سینگ از دیٹ ان میکینسٹک انوائرمنٹ وین دا کانفلکٹ ارائزز or that we have already seen that the mechanistic environment conflict can it will be less in severity and magnitude as compared to a conflict arising in organic situation where people frequently come into contact with each other where they depend on their tasks uh, the task interdependence is high the technology and the uh, interdependence is not pooled but it is reciprocal and sequential when the decision making is decentralized when the people are empowered to make decisions and there is no hard core extensive information systems available sops procedures and when the focus is not efficiency but effectiveness wahan par we will be hampered to use the rational model of behavior kyunki wahan par hame use karna padega the opposite view of the organizational processes and that view is the political model political model may we do not use standard operating procedures and standard company policies and precedents which are set by the past to resolve conflicts political model means the organizational players the organizational leaders people who are involved in the process of decision making to resolve conflicts they need diplomacy they need political skills and also a little bit use of power we power or politics wo issues hain jin pe hum next session mein baat karenge but political model of resolving the conflict will differ from a purely rationalistic model of resolving resolving the conflict because rationalistic model is based on rationality machine like organizations which are run by manuals and sops whereas the organic organization is not run by sops it is sometimes run by a culture sometimes by an entrepreneur sometimes by the collective learning and cognition of people so over there we cannot apply the rationalistic model of management here we will apply a model which will treat situations differently contextually difference jo uh, contextual difference hai wo account mein liye jayenge جو باقی کے ڈفرینسز ہیں وہ اکاؤنٹ میں لیے جائیں گے آرگنائزیشنل گروتھ آرگنائزیشنل اسٹریٹجی ول بی ٹیکن ان ٹو اکاؤنٹ اینڈ دی پروسیس آف ڈیفیوزنگ دیز کانفلکٹس ول بیکم مور اور لیس پولیٹیکل رادر دین اے پرڈکٹیبل ریشنل ماڈل سو ان دس سیشن وٹ وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ وی ہیو جسٹ اوپن دی ایشو آف وٹ از کانفلکٹ وٹ از انٹر گروپ کانفلکٹ why the intergroup conflicts occur in organizations and we saw that there are natural groundings there are natural reasons the which lead to the creation of conflicts reasons like goal incompatibility between departments reasons like the very existence of departments where people have different goals different objectives different ambitions where they have different backgrounds where they have different personalities where they have different values and beliefs where they have different style of living even because people living or working in r&d department will have a very casual laid back attitude not in work but in coming to work jab subah 8 baje aaye 11 baje aaye 10 baje aaye but a person working in a production department and the shift starts at 6 he has to be there at 6 
So the attitude to work will be different. So all these differences will lead to conflicts, but these conflicts will vary. In certain circumstances, the conflicts are low in nature, but in certain other circumstances or under certain other design of an organization, the chances are that the conflicts will be more frequent. Or ye healthy bhi hongi, zuri nahi hai ki ye unhealthy hong. The conflict is basically a difference in uh, opinion, a different different point of view. People discuss it. They can become uh, the discussion can become heated. That is fine. But as long as the objective is to resolve a organizational problem and the issue does not become personal, till that level it is fine. But these conflicts will then be resolved by um, the organizational processes and if the organization is a mechanistic organization which works on the basis of SOPs and which strives to attain efficiency, then there conflicts be zara kam hongi aur unko dur karne ke aur unko dissolve karne ke aur resolve karne ke tarike bhi zara mechanistic hongi. So, hum wahan par rational model use kar rahe hain. Lekin jahan par culture is strong and people are working like teams aur unki ek dusre pe interdependence bhi bahut hai aur unko bahut clearly ye bhi nahi pata where they are reporting like a matrix structure for example. Wahan par it will be very difficult to use a rational model because you cannot treat the cases similarly. Each case will be different. Each case of conflict will be a total new challenge. Therefore, the political skills, the diplomatic skills, the persuasion skills, the uh, real interpersonal job ki skills hain, uh, resolve karne ki issues ko, wo saamne aati. And when those skills are put into use, then we are talking about an organizational behavior which is more or less a critical mode of behavior rather than a pure rationalistic mode of behavior. Now, in the next session to come, we will discuss in some detail, which we have point raised here, that sources of conflict are horizontal in the organization and sources of conflict are vertical. Bhi. So, we have already seen that organizations do have vertical linkages and they also have horizontal linkages and this will vary karega depending on whether an organization is mechanistic or organic uh, it will vary kaun se links hain vertical links ya horizontal links jinko organizational zyada use kar rahi so we will see also what are those links and how vertical and horizontal links uh, can create conflicts but that we will see in the next session till then it is khuda hafiz thank you very much 